Although this is not really a very common scenario or I don't think this is the proper way to handle these kind of things. Uh, I've encountered some users which had uh, some additional tasks they wanted to perform on the machine before installing an MSIX package. So, for example, a user wanted to delete everything that was present present in the app data folder. Now, the problem with a package is that, let's say in the past you had an MSI package, right? And everything that the app did in terms of settings and other stuff like that was saved in the app data folder, right? So let's say my previous application was creating uh, my directory here, which contained all the settings. When you install an MSIX application, uh, the application has access to read from that location if necessary. So let's say you have uh, the settings from the old MSI, you install the new MSIX package and automatically the old settings will be detected by your package and uh, will be applied. Uh, in this case, the user wanted to delete that folder before installing the MSIX package. Another scenario was a user who had some local machine registry that he wanted to write before installing the MSIX package. He knew that the MSIX package had access to the local machine registry, but he didn't want that registry to be captured inside the MSIX package. He wanted the registry to remain on the machine as it is and he could place it however he wants, maybe delete, uh, maybe delete it and other stuff like that. So you might wonder, okay, so if I want to do anything on a machine, I can just create a PowerShell script that does everything I want and then install the MSIX package from the PowerShell script. While you are correct in assuming this, the whole point of this video is to help normal users uh, install the package more easily. So a normal user will not know what a PowerShell script is. A normal user will not know how to run a PowerShell script and so forth and so on. You must understand that for a basic user, what he's seen his whole life was exe executables, so exe files, which were installing stuff on his machine and, conf and configuring it however he desired, right? Uh, of course, you might argue that users also have seen MSI installations, I totally agree, but I think that most users will recognize an EXE installers. Okay, so not, now that I've talked for the past four hours, let's see how we can create a wrapper with 7-zip SFX uh, maker in order to achieve this, right? So I have my random MSIX package here and another script which I just created in PowerShell. The script is very easy. The script before it installs the MSIX package, it deletes the my directory folder from my app data location. Next, after this is deleted, I will install the MSIX package using the add app package commandlet. Uh, the installation path is dynamic and I'm searching for the MSIX to be near my script. So it's not something very complicated, it's actually a pretty pretty easy script. Right? Okay, so what we want to do next is select these two files, right click and create an archive with 7-zip. 
Once we are here, it's very important to have these two settings. So the archive format must be 7z, so from 7-zip, and the compression method must be LZMA. Do not choose LZMA2. Okay, and now that this is selected, just click OK. And your 7-zip archive is created. Now that we have this, we can open up the 7-zip SFX Maker. Now that we have this opened, let's first add our file that we just created. Okay, and next let's, let's select some options here. So, for example, the title of the installation, I want it to be something like environment variables msix installation uh, i want to overwrite all the files each and every time i extract it and the extraction path must be a temporary folder uh, we can also also show the sfx icon in the prompts now the begin prompt i want to show the user something so let's ask him uh, should we start the installation okay uh, next we go to the extract path tab and deselect this we don't want the users to uh, change our extraction path and most of these you can leave this uh, as they are if you want you can customize them if not you can leave it as they are and the final thing that we need to do is to go on the tasks tab click the plus sign and we need to select a task to perform after extraction so we want to run a program right now i'm going to paste this here first now what program do we want to run we don't want to run the powershell script because it's not that you are running we need to run the actual powershell executable right so the powershell executable can be found in c windows system 32 windows powershell v1.0 now this if you right click in the field you have some variables that you can use so for example we can use the system drive we can use the system root uh, the percent percent t means the extraction path and so forth so and so on and in our case we want to use the system root so the system root variable translates to c windows correct and what we have to paste next is the rest of it so we are going to paste the system32 windows powershell v1.0 and we add powershell.exe now as arguments to powershell we are going to tell him this we want our window style to be hidden and the file we want him to run is present in the extract location right that we had here the extraction path and the script name it's called install msix.ps1 so paste it here and also i want to hide console windows now windows style hidden tells powershell to not show any type of console window when it's running okay now that we configured everything here correctly we click ok and we click make sfx now, in this folder, you see our my sfx.txt was created, so let's double click it. Should we start the installation? Yes, please. And I think it's quite fast. Now, if we go to the roaming profile, our folder is gone. Okay, that's a good sign. And our environment variable msix package has been installed. Now, you can do many many things with this so technically it all depends on what you want to do in your powershell script 
but if you want it if you want to make it easier for your users to install stuff just make a simple wrapper i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you in the next one bye bye